Okay, so welcome back to our study in the book of 1 Peter. We're in our 31st lesson, and so today we're picking up, just as I said yesterday, right in chapter 3, verse 1, and it says, In the same way you wives must accept the authority of your husband. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words, and they will, they will be won over. So, in the same way is what it starts out. What way is that? The same way that we've been reading about in chapter 2 and really this whole section. Its whole section has been about suffering and at times suffering unjustly. We don't like to suffer. Sometimes we see it as a sign of God's displeasure pleasure in our lives, and yet that's not the truth in Scripture. And suffering, we, we talked about this a little bit at the end of yesterday's lesson, is usually persecution coming from other people. We're not talking about suffering through a disease or a sickness, you know. Sometimes it, it, that, that can really cause confusion and even duplicity in the body of Christ. People will say, you know, I think that uh, God put this sickness on me and then they'll take medicine to get rid of the sickness. It, it's okay. If it, it, you can't have it both ways. God can help us to learn lessons through those things. He can draw us closer to Him through those things. He can be near to us in those times. But that doesn't mean that that's the kind of suffering He's talking about here. So now looking at this, this whole section's been about suffering unjustly, and now we're to, from the general to specific examples, and now we go from a work example to an actual relationship example between a husband and a wife. I love the husband and wife tell us that some important things. You know, we're adopted into the body of Christ, and sometimes we think, oh, adopted, adopted people aren't real family. You know, someone will uh, uh, be asking about adopted children. Well, which ones are yours and which ones are adopted? That's an invalid question. They're all adopted. And this husband and wife relationship can show us that more importantly, uh, more clearly than almost anything. Because think about it. Who is your closest relative on the planet? Is your wife. She's not related to you by blood. The same thing is... Um, we are really interconnected with God. And if you, if you want to be really, uh, really clear about it, yes, we're adopted into the body of Christ, but then we receive a blood transfusion, and, and His blood, the blood of Jesus, is what makes us all clean and clear to enter the presence of God as adopted sons and daughters. Okay, off of that for, for, and back on now. So, the idea of wives submitting to their husbands is absolutely despised in this culture. Matter of fact, uh, you know, I've heard of uh, ladies having a list of what they want their husbands. They want this, 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 this. And, you know, it's seen as standards and all that. And I've seen some people, now this isn't a blanket statement. There are, there are obviously different areas. But in our culture, outside the church, you can have the same group of people, and if a guy says, well, I want, I have standards for my wife, this, this, and this, and oh, you need to accept her for who he is, because, again, our society really elevates victimhood of someone who is seen as oppressed. And the victimhood of uh, being a woman esteems her above being a man, because that's seen as someone who is the oppressor and the woman's the oppressed. Again, the culture and society, not the church. So <clears throat> when you go into that church and that kind of outlook kind of bleeds in, and even from the outside looking in especially, they're seeing this as, oh man, these guys are still living in the 1800s. They're oppressing women. They're just... And then... The wives are just floor mats. And, and so, so we're going to ex examine this a little bit in First Peter. So the idea of submitting to their husbands was also despised in their culture. But it just like today, it's also misunderstood. Notice that submission, yes, although it is a command, it's not anything that has anything to do with the husbands. The husbands are irrelevant when it comes to whether or not the wife submits. It's between her and God, not between her and her husband. And it is a voluntary act. It is not coercion. It's a choice. It's something just like the uh, attitude toward authority. It is a command, but then we have to choose whether or not we're going to comply 
by our heart attitude by choosing whether or not we are going to honor authority and uh, respect the authority over us. Well, in this way, uh, it's also a choice on whether or not a wife submits to her husband. And submission does not have anything to do with intrinsic value. Uh, men and women are equal. They're both created in the image of God, and they are equal in form. However, they're not equal in function in this case. Uh, and before you think, and that's too harsh, we could say the same thing about God the Father and God the Son, God the Father and Jesus. What was God the Father's function in his relationship with Jesus? He, Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was praying, Lord, if, it's, if it be thy will, let, uh, if, if, if possible, let this cup pass from me, this cup of suffering about to come. But nevertheless, not your, my will, but your will be done. There was a definite order of who was over who. God was in authority, and Jesus submitted to the Lord and his will. Was Jesus any less God than God the Father? No. He was the same in form, but different in his function. We see a similar situation here with husbands and wives. So the submission does not mean passivity. The wife does not give up who she is. She does not become a doormat. Quite the contrary, her intrinsic uniqueness and value and strengths and characteristics and talents and abilities actually strengthen her husband and their relationship. You want to walk into a bachelor's, all you need to know is walking into a bachelor pad and walking into a house where there's a husband and a wife, husband and wives are better. It, it adds something to it. You get, you get everything uh, getting strengthened. So a woman is never told to love her husband, if you notice there. Um, it's really important to understand that. She is told to submit and to respect him, but never to love him. There's, there's an important principle on why. Because husbands see their wives' support as love. If they feel supported that's, and respected, they feel loved. It is the truth about all men, for that matter. You could be in a relationship where, where you're dealing with a son or you're dealing with an uncle. It's the same thing where when they feel respected, they see that as, as, as being valued. And being valued is a way to feel that they feel, that men feel loved. So nothing communicates love more than a wife's supportive attitude. Uh, I've said this many times. I heard it once a long time ago at a, with a marriage I wasn't even married at the time, but it was a marriage counselor was talking about this, and he said, the most fragile flower in the world is a man's ego. And I'm like, what? And he said, but then what he said after that really spoke to me. He said, you know, if my wife's behind me and supports me, I can go out and conquer the world. But if she doesn't support me, I don't even want to get out of bed. And I got to think about it. You know, I, there's been times I went out and the world felt like it was against me and I was uh, not being very successful. Uh, it was hard times, but I'd come home, and my wife would support me and tell me she believed in me, and um, it made me feel like I could take on the world. But I'll tell you this, I could be doing successful. I could be uh, having worldly success and going out and doing everything perfect in every area of my life, come home, and my wife says, uh, just, just doesn't have any respect for me doesn't support me, I feel like a complete failure. That is how important and how powerful our relationships are with husbands and wives. So um, when a wife tries to get out of order and she wants to get out of the supporting role and take over the headship role because she doesn't think her husband's a good leader or whatever the thing is, and she attempts to be the authority and she's constantly rebuking, correcting, telling him what he's not doing right, what he should be doing to be the leader and this and that, that's when husbands start to pull away emotionally. That's when they start to distance themselves emotionally and, and, and you, usually even physically. Uh, as verse in Proverbs says, it's better to be in a corner of an attic than with a uh, nagging wife. I think that was the invention of the man cave. <clears throat> but the reason for that is, is it because he feels so unvalued and he feels so bad about himself because that's the power of that relationship. The wife 
being supportive and respecting her husband and submitting to a husband, it can speak so much into a man's life. You have no idea. Um, Submitting is about being in alignment with God, though. It's about recognizing the role that God has assigned you. Different in function, but not in form. You are equal. You are both people. You are both created in the image of God and both have equal value. But God has chosen the function of this. So husbands are supposed to lead their family with love. Um, Wives are called to, and equipped actually, to be a support in that role to their husbands. And even if wives are better leaders, that is irrelevant. They must uh, yield. Like a, a, if a semi is going down the highway and a, and a pre, and they, they're at a red light and a Prius is going across, they have to yield to that Prius. Or if it's a yield sign, if the Prius has the right of way, even though the truck is more powerful, it can plow through, that doesn't mean it's allowed to. I can think of times in the Army Almost, I'm a pretty big guy, and almost every single person that was in my chain of command, I could probably have, I'm a bigger person, and I had a good chance of taking them physically. I was physically bigger and stronger, most likely. That was irrelevant. I could have seen myself as a better leader. That's irrelevant. I had to follow that chain of command that was in place over me. And this is where God has called us to be faithful in what we have been given and what we've been assigned, not to get upset that the people over us or under us or beside us aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Our job is to be faithful to our vertical audience and let the horizontal audience see God working through us. And we're going to put a pin in that and pick up from there tomorrow. Have a great day.